Thank you. Uh, I too would like to acknowledge our traditional owners of this land who educated their children here. Now, I'd like to start by introducing you to Sarah. This is a video of Sarah when she was just five years old and she's about to start school. What else is on your uniform? Um, my hat colour is green too because I don't really like a colour uniform. I really want to watch I want to wear my own clothes because it's better than uniform, better than uniform. Oh. And what colour would your dress be? Blue, pink, yellow, purple. Now, I'm sure you'll all agree that Sarah is super cute and very chatty. But what is remarkable about that video is that Sarah was born profoundly deaf. She had no hearing whatsoever. Hearing aids could not help her to hear. So I performed cochlear implant surgery for her when she was less than one year old. And through the cochlear implant, she has learned to listen, to hear, and to speak normally. This is the modern day miracle, a cochlear implant where otherwise she would have lived in a world of silence. A daring decision for her parents to make, to decide when she was just a baby to have surgery. But what a fantastic decision, because it's meant that she could learn to hear and speak normally. Let me tell you a bit about hearing and the cochlear implant. Sound waves travel through your ear canal and are picked up by your eardrum. The middle ear magnifies that mechanical movement of the sound waves and it's sent into the inner ear. The inner ear takes that mechanical energy and changes, changes it to electrical energy. And we then have a signal going up the hearing nerve through to the brain and we hear that as conscious sound, as spoken language or music or various sounds. Now the cochlear implant is able to mimic our natural hearing if something doesn't work, if our inner hair cells don't work, if the transmission between the inner hair cells and the nerves don't work, or if the nerves don't work well. So the co cochlear implant can compensate for that and can send that signal up through to the brain. The cochlear implant is made up of two components. There's an external component that picks up sound, changes it to a digital code and sends it through to the internal component. The internal component then sends that digital code down into that little array inside the cochlea and sets off a signal on our hearing nerve and we can hear. Now hearing loss is a major problem. In Australia, one in six people have hearing loss. That's 3.4, 3.6, sorry, million people in Australia. And 150,000 people have severe or profound hearing loss. That's where they would do better with the implant than they do with the hearing aids. They would hear more through the cochlear implant. The World Health Organization suggests that about 5% of the world are, here, are living with disabling hearing loss. That's 466 million people, and of which 34 million are children. Now, the impacts of hearing loss are far reaching. For children, it means that they often can't learn to speak and have difficulty communicating with friends and family. If you're a child and you can't learn to speak, then you might not actually get an education because for many places in the world, they only have spoken language schools. So if you can't hear, you can't learn to speak, you actually don't go to school, and that's a terrible thing. For adults, they might find it harder to use the phone, to hear people in meetings. They're having to lip read and guess what people are saying, and so they feel exhausted at the end of the day. And for the elderly, hearing loss leads to social isolation, depression, and is an independent risk factor for dementia. So we really need to raise awareness that people don't have to suffer in silence, that we can offer them more. 
get them hearing better with a cochlear implant. Now, we have this wonderful technology, the cochlear implant. Professor Graham Clark invented the Australian device, which is used worldwide. We have Australian Hearing, a government-funded body that provides free hearing aids to children and to pensioners. But even in Australia, with arguably the best hearing care in the world, only one in 10 people who would benefit from a cochlear implant have received one. It's just a drop in the ocean. Why is this so? Why have not more people been able to be benefited by having a cochlear implant? Now these reasons are probably very multifactorial, but one of the main reasons is that people just don't realise. They don't realise that they could hear more with a cochlear implant, that there is some solution to their hearing problem. So we really need to raise awareness for people to understand that they could benefit from a cochlear implant. Now my patients all follow their own unique individual paths. They have their own hearing journey and the cochlear implant is only a moment in time. And for them, their journey with hearing doesn't stop there. They have to learn to listen through the cochlear implant to retrain their brain to pay attention to sound. But for you all, you all have your own journey, your own unique path that you will follow and that you will make and that it will make you the person that you are. Everyone takes a daring leap into the unknown, daring to grow as people. Be a positive influence. So whether you're going to be a positive influence as an individual, like me, helping one patient at a time, or maybe you being kind to a friend, or dare I say, being kind to somebody who's not your friend. Or you can be a positive influence at a community level, at a country level, or at a worldwide level. When I was at school, I loved doing craft. I was one in four girls doing industrial arts at a co-ed high school. And then I changed to a girls' school in year nine and had to do sewing. Now, was that all a waste of time? No way. For a surgeon, I could use a drill, I could use a hammer, I was good at putting things together and could see things in 3D. And on top of that, I could sew neatly. So nothing is a waste of time. Our paths are often winding with unplanned detours. I knew I wanted to become an ear, nose and throat surgeon, an ENT. I changed hospitals so that I could do a junior ENT position called a resident. The next year I got on to uh, the training scheme to become an ENT registrar. And I was able to take full opportunity of that position straight from the front, straight from the beginning, because I'd already done the neurosurgical registrar job and the ENT registrar job. Thanks. And so I was able to take the opportunities right from the beginning and really enjoy um, and participate in the operations. So all experience is helpful. I really encourage you to take these opportunities because it will build the person that you're going to be and it will build on your strengths. So finally, look after your hearing. Noise exposure is the most common cause of hearing loss and these days it's commonly due to kids having their music up way too loud, being blasted by your earphones or earbuds into your ears. So look after your hearing, don't have your music up too loudly. And then hopefully, in the future, you won't have to see an ENT surgeon like me.